Thanks for watching. This video is going to be about Magic Leap. So this is not going to be one of those failure videos because the company is still operating. So what happened was they founded in 2010 and within six years, they had a valuation of 4.5 billion. They raised 3.6 billion in financing and reached a very high valuation within only six years. But the thing is, they reached that valuation before their product launch. If you just look at the timeline, they had a 4.5 billion valuation in 2016, but their product launch was in 2018. And the launch didn't go too great great. And then in 2020, they had to fire a thousand people. Their valuation dropped down to 450 million, even though they actually raised 350 million right before. Their valuation still dropped down to 450 million. And then they kicked out the CEO. So the CEO from 2010 to 2020, he stepped down. They exchanged them with a different CEO. And then just now, 2021, they actually raised another 500 million again. And now the valuation is back up to $2 billion. So you can see that they started out, they had a lot of high it looked great and then they had the product launch and then everything went down the ceo had to step down and everything exchanged the ceo and now the valuation is back up to 2 billion so they have a really interesting trajectory and they're still going so they might still launch a product that's going to be extremely successful so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do multiple videos so in this video for example i'm going to look at 2016 this was pre-launch pre-product reveal this is the old ceo talking about the company and then i'm also going to have more videos on then during the launch basically right after after the launch talking a little bit more about the product because everything has been released already and then afterwards an interview from the new ceo so the new ceo talking about the company the new direction stuff like that once again there's not a failure type video the company is still operating but i think it's very interesting to see what went wrong what could have been done better and what are they going to do in the future so roni uh your face graced the cover of wired last month and I got to go down to Florida and see what you were doing with Magic Leap. Cool. And it leads me to this one basic question. Are you really here? <laughs> I think so. Super cringy. First of all, he's the CEO. So he is the CEO from 2010 to 2020. And then he had to step down. This video is recorded in 2016. Product launch is going to be in two years. So if you look at this, this is two years before the product launch. Okay, good place to start. Um, so. Roni, you, um, you have created something that we all want to understand. Um, I want you to explain to me first how it works. It's a great question. So um, I call what we do a mixed reality light field. And the inspiration came from, first of all, thinking about how we experience the world visually without any technology. And the idea was there's this amazing display we have in our brain already. It's processed by our visual cortex. And I thought, we would never build a better display than that, so how could we get into that? And that led to the studying of how the visual world outside of us, which we call... <laughs> she looks like she's not even listening. She's like kind of scratching her nose. How the visual world outside of us, which we call an analog light field, how that interfaces with your brain, the sort of physics and neurobiology interface, and allows that display in your brain to create all the amazing imagery that we're doing right now. And our digital light field is basically mimicking that process. It's allowing the brain to be a display and not replacing the display you already have with something inferior. It's trying to use what's there. Okay, so how does it work? Um, what is wrong with the audience? She asked the exact same question again. How does it work? How does it work? Like she clearly wasn't listening in the beginning. And this wasn't the answer she was looking for. He was talking almost esoteric. He said, okay, we have a technology. We don't want to give you a screen. We want to manipulate your screen. We want to give you impulses that turn your brain into a screen. I mean, it already is a screen, but they want to manipulate that into giving you the images that they want you to see in your brain. So that's what he's talking about. So now she's going, okay, how does it work? Obviously, you're going to have to do something with the eyes. So you have to send light there, which basically is a screen, but let's see how he answers. Well, the, the heavy lifting piece of what we do, uh, we have to thank nature and biology. I mean, we evolved this incredible, um, this incredible brain that has 100 trillion connections, hundreds of billions of neurons, and somewhere around 40% plus is all about visual processing and perception. And what we're doing is we create a digital light field signal that is a biomimetic signal that is very similar to the analog light field that's coming in, and our signal blends with that one. So really you have this one integrated signal coming from your eye retina system into the visual cortex, 
And you don't okay, if you want to look at his technical explanation, I invite you to watch the whole video. I don't want to have it be too boring because he's talking very esoterically. What I'm more interested in is basically the business model. What are the customers they're targeting and what is going to go wrong in 2018? So we already know that there wasn't really a market. So they kind of had a product, but they didn't really have the market. She's actually not asking some questions that I would have asked. So for example, is there a benefit of doing that? Is there a benefit to directly send signals to the eyes versus is having a screen like is there a very technological or maybe user experience benefit to doing that and then the other part is are there limitations to this for example if you do it this way do you always have to be in a dark room can you be at a point where you basically can be in a very bright environment and you can also do that is it the same as having a screen or is what he's talking about basically a screen so is what he's saying that he's sending impulses to the eye is that a screen or is it something different and is it different enough to be really relevant for the customer. But you know, when we're thinking about the, the technology, I mean, in asking what they see, I, I want to know how you think it's going to be used. Because right now, at least, the this is the perfect question because this is now the use case of the technology okay we understand that you have a this is actually a funny screen he's kind of looking down oh no please don't ask the use case question so now she's kind of asking going direction of the business model and market major the bulk of the conversation is happening around entertainment but you're really thinking about this as something broader than entertainment as a, as a, a new platform of sorts right a absolutely our, our goal is to get to all day everyday computing and i think of it as like a full course meal and our media goal is how do we get to a billion of seven people on the planet doing all day, every day mixed reality. Um, and, it, and you think of entertainment and media and games as sort of like the dessert. Um, and it, some people just want to go and eat their ice cream first and that's cool, but we're going to have all the courses. We'll have the salad and the appetizer and the vegetarian meat. I'm vegetarian, so not probably not steak. They have, and you will see it in the next video, so they have very strong collaborations with the MBA, and it's all about how do you use this technology for entertainment. So basically, you can see a whole basketball game, and you can see the players moving around. You have the AR. You can really see the three-dimensional relationship between the players. This was a use case they really, really highlighted. So this is entertainment. He has a broader vision. Just to protect him a little bit here, clearly there was a lot of interest in the entertainment part, but this wasn't his full focus. He saw a very broad vision, but he was pigeonholed on the entertainment part. So what actually ended up happening is there wasn't really a strong customer interest, willingness to pay for this type of technology, which is quite expensive for the entertainment use case, especially when it comes to just watching a basketball game or whatever, and maybe even gaming. There wasn't really a use case for that, but it could be that he was pigeonholed into that because of all the financing that was targeted at that. Sometimes you really are restricted by what people pay for. You can see that in university. If a professor can't raise grant money for a certain subject, then this is not going to be researched. If a professor or research group can raise money for a very certain topic, this is what they're going to do. And with startups, you, you sometimes see the same thing where if you can't finance a certain project, even though you already have a prototype because people just aren't interested in that market, then it's going to be very difficult to finance it. But sometimes you just pivot, change the deck, keep the technology, but have a different focus and suddenly financing comes in because there's more interest in that. Can be government funding, can be private funding. So maybe he was limited by the type of financing that was available and was all entertainment. But what I find interesting is how he talks about everyday use, everyday computing. Unfortunately, this is not what they went into. They might in the future, but let's hear him speak. Uh, but all the pieces, the, all the nutrients of what makes your day, it's really about what is your life like morning to the evening and how can mixed reality make it tinged a little bit better? How can we add a little bit of magic and make you actually a little bit smarter, sort so of amplify your brain? Give me an example of something I might do with it a decade from now. Um, probably within the decade you might wake up and the first thing uh, you might see um, your assistant pop up and that assistant might be a very smart assistant and knows everything about your schedule and you say what are we going to do today? It's like uh, you go to the gym, you want to have breakfast. Yesterday you had a chocolate cake, so how about some salad? Um, it might lay out your whole day. I'm not too sold on this vision. I can see we are going to have that in 100 years for sure. In 100 years, someone is going to build that. But in the next 10 years, I mean, this was 2016, but let's say in the next 10 years, I don't think we're going to have that yet in that way because it has to be so convenient that if you wake up, you either want to put it on or you already have it on. So it has to be something that is extremely convenient. But if you have like a big glass, I'm not going to put on like this weird diverse glasses, you know, like every morning. This is kind of an odd thing. 
thing. It has to be extremely convenient. We're used to wearing watches. You can have like an Apple watch or whatever. It's very convenient. But in this particular case, I wouldn't be sold on that. But he's talking about everyday computing. I would actually be much, much, much more interested in the enterprise sector where you really need that type of information. It can be emergency response. It can be people who are working in some critical parts or maybe even in a laboratory. I don't know. Wherever you have high requirements to have information at this exact space, but also have this IoT type thing where you need to know what is what. So for example, if you look at 10 chemicals, you immediately know what it is because you have the glasses for that. And I can see this being quite relevant in laboratories that want to be very modern and where maybe sometimes you have these errors where people grab the wrong thing. Maybe if you can address something like that, I can see that. But obviously I'm just making stuff up. But for him to immediately go to the end consumer for a use case, it's kind of risky. I wouldn't be too surprised or I'm not too surprised that this actually didn't go well. Let's say you want to talk to your mom. Okay. Your mom just shows up. She's there and you have a conversation just like this. So since we're talking about time, um, within the decade that might happen, when are we going to see Magic Leap? Um, I won't tell you when we're shipping it, but I will tell you a couple of things. Um, we are turning on... Actually, one additional note. As soon as he talks about a different use case, you're also talking about different markets. But if he brings out these goggles, he's immediately going to compete with smartphones and with smartwatches. And these are markets. It's not like because it's glasses, he's not going to compete with them. It's the same use case. It's a use case of I wake up, what has happened while I was asleep? You grab your phone, you grab your smartwatch. Let's say I'm waking up, I'm making breakfast, I have my smartwatch, whatever it is. This is the use case. It's not only that he's bringing some something new it's also he's competing with everything that is fulfilling that need already so yeah there's something always to consider the first production line of our factory throughout this summer okay. and that production line actually allows us to build uh, through real commercial processes what our first product is going to be uh, so we are basically building a series of what we call pilots of our real of the real production unit and we want to be able to call a date with really high accuracy and we want to make sure the product's good so we may have a system when people visit us that looks like it should be shipping but we're debugging and when we say we're shipping we really want to nail it so but it is coming soon. Coming soon. So what, what product is it that you will be manufacturing? What can you tell us? Yeah, he's going to be a little bit vague because as I said, it's 2016. You can look at images now if you Google it. It's basically these goggles with these external little computing devices that you also have to have. He's going to be a little vague with that. I think he's not even going to say if it's going to be goggles or not, if it's going to be glasses or not. What I find interesting is that this is already at a place where he has the production line. So the project is already lined up. He can't say too much. So there's a lot of secrecy going on. Everybody's assigned an NDA. They're not allowed to talk about it. Obviously, he has a CEO. He has to keep everything a secret. But I actually find it a little bit concerning that he didn't jump in about the use case. A lot of CEOs don't talk about the traction, don't talk about the use case and how they have proven that. I mean, they probably talk differently to investors. They have a different language for them. But I kind of would always like to see a little boots to the ground with the vision. So if you have a vision where you say entertainment is like the ice cream, this is like the dessert, this is like the thing everybody wants, then I always like to see what parts of entertainment. So where does the money come from? Are people going to pay? for that so just as you explain it to always validate a little bit more and then on the other side when you have a broad vision you say okay people want to use that in their home to always add a little bit of flavor about the realism okay maybe it's not the most realistic thing to say that the vision is you talk to your grandma and it looks like she's sitting in front of you and you have the goggles on or whatever maybe it's much more realistic to say here are the industries that actually have a direct interest and they would definitely pay for that we can see the chemical industry we can see offices and executive level managers could need that for conference calls and whatever we can see this in this case in this case so he's a little bit vague um, think of it as a um, a mobile computing device that has an extremely powerful CPU GPU it has a real-time sensing computer and it also interacts with a cloud computing system so really we have three computing systems in one one does real-time awareness of the world one that has a very powerful CPU GPU um, that you walk around with and one that's connected to a cloud and having like security and privacy around that and all of it is enabling this contextual awareness of the world plus um, your ability to have this integration of mixed reality environments characters people text you just want to see a screen you want to create a television you could do that you want to watch Breaking Bad that'll be fun uh, if you want to have other things like we might talk about soon uh, they could just appear in your world and it's really about not cluttering your eye and it's about giving you complete control over that digital information. Um, 
I it's funny that he says it's not about cluttering your eye. Later on, they have these huge goggles. It kind of looks ridiculous. So clearly they're going to clutter the eye. It's a little bit concerning that as they're already starting production, it doesn't match what they're actually going to release. So this is a little bit concerning. I don't know what happened there, but clearly it is cluttering the eye because you have this huge thing. So what's going to happen next? They're going to have all of these Lucasfilm Hollywood people come on stage. And I want to be honest with you, the whole interview is going to get really, really boring at this point. So if you want to watch it, I just recommend to watch the beginning there. So they have these people come on and basically just talk about entertainment. At this point, they talk about these entertainment rights and whatever, Disneyland, blah, blah, blah. But this strong focus on entertainment, I think this is what brought them down. And then later on, the new CEO starts talking a little bit more about different applications. So I think they're moving away from that. And I wouldn't be surprised if the newest investor decks, where they just raised more money and went back to a 2 billion valuation just a few weeks ago, I wouldn't be surprised if their whole commercial focus, business plan focus, is moving away from entertainment or entertainment is less than 25% of what they're looking at. So I'm actually very, very curious how this company is going to go on. Next video is going to be him after the launch. And then the video after that is going to be the new CEO talking about the new direction of the company. All right. I hope you liked the video. Let me know.